Hi, my name is Misty from Origin and this is my basic champion guide to Morgana. Morgana support in solo queue is not one of the best supports to carry with because her bind is very slow and it's uh, quite easy to outplay. So you kind of need some synergy with your AD. So I, I would r rather recommend you do walk you with Morgana so you can like black shield at the right times and use your W to push the wave and poke more than more than relying on your Q. But uh, if you do happen to solo queue with with Morgana, I would say you try to lane and stay equal in lane and try to like set up roams because you have a lot of CC that you can use to catch people off guard in other lanes or even in the jungle. The main thing that provides pressure with Morgana is the fact that if you have brush control, that means you can. It's easier to land bindings because the guy doesn't know where they're coming from and it's harder for them to, for them to dodge. And the other thing you can do with Morgana is really pressure at the enemy tower because you're really hard to get ganked with your black shield if you use it properly and at the right time. Obviously, everything is uh, very dependent on what the jungler is and what your enemy 2v2 is, but uh, the, the main things Morgana excel as is uh, black shield and bind, so what you want to do is try to get, get lane control by just pressuring, by using W on the wave, poking them out, and trying to hit a bind or two to pressure them and as soon as you have some pressure going you can start harassing a tower you shooting binds maybe you hit him underneath the tower and you can poke him even more and you're always like kind of safe to to ganks because of the black shield in team fights the uh, one thing that you should note is that morgana's ult is not really that useful uh, you shouldn't really focus on it too much because you're quite squishy and you ulting on the enemy carries is usually end up getting you one shotted. So ideally, what I what I usually end up doing with Morgana is, first of all, being really like aware of when and who to black shield. That's the most important. And from there on, just try to land binds. Doesn't matter on who, just whoever you think you can hit, because the bind is a three second snare at, at level nine. So that's a lot of time for your team to work around. And that's done. And use your ult to just slow whatever bruiser goes on your carries because you don't really want to go in with your ult. You want to ideally just use it defensively. The most important thing with Morgana is to keep two things into account. The first thing is that your bind is, is very slow and therefore it's very easy to dodge. So what you want to do is you want to trick your opponent into thinking that you're going to shoot it and just keep walking closer to them because the, the other point I wanted to make is that since your bind is actually has such a long range, it might trick you into thinking that you can shoot it from max range and it will hit. But uh, against a decent player, your bind will never hit max range unless they don't see it coming. So what you want to do is you want to walk into a kind of a half range of the max range of the bind and then just just try and try and like trick your opponent into a position where he has a where he struggles to dodge either by him going close to a wall or between the the tower and the and the wall, you know, this can this kind of situations or just uh, like if you only can take one path, then bind that path. This kind of stuff. Like usually, you have to think a lot about where and how to bind. And and the other thing is like don't just shoot your bind randomly. Like actually think about what you're doing because if you shoot your bind, then you're gonna lose pressure, especially in lane. So therefore, what I would recommend is that you you just are more conservative on when you shoot your spells and then just use it. And practice makes perfect. Another tip would be to uh, use the alt key. The alt key is set on default to self-cast uh, spells on yourself, so that will make it much easier to spell shield yourself whenever you're playing Morgana. The key thing about Morgana in pro play is the fact that it's kind of a... I wouldn't call it a counter pick, but it's a very annoying pick to play against when you pick something like Nautilus or, or Poppy or just champions that are really reliant on, on their CC, say Alistar for example. And what Morgana does is just negates that champion completely. There's a lot of supports that just have a lot of CC, right? Like, say Tarek, for example, right? Tar Morgana would make a champion like Tarek useless, uh, Thresh, Alistar. There's a lot of situations that the Black Shield is just really, really strong. And the fact that in lane, uh, as I said before, you can just shove the wave into the enemy tower 24-7 because you're very, 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 very uh, hard to gank. And I think those those two things combined make Morgana a, a, a good champion to pick in pro play. Back at Worlds, when I did play Morgana, a, a champion that really synergized very well with was Jinx. So I would recommend playing that lane. It was actually really fun because you can set up CC for each other and 
uh, you can just basically keep the guy stunned for like six seconds and burst him down. Um, another fun lane to play with Morgana would probably be Ash for the same for the same reason, the synergy between both. Or Kalista. I think Kalista is also actually very nice in Morgana because if you remember what I told you before about not ulting into the enemy team because you can get one shotted, this is what Kalista makes happen that you actually can ult into in, inside the enemy team because Kalista will save you afterwards. And another important thing with Kalista and Morgana is that if Morgana is ulting on, on top of Kalista, like the tether will not really break if when Kalista ults. You will actually still be tethering people and they will eventually get stunned and then you can follow up with a Kalista knockup. And then your CC. So there's a lot of uh, weird things you can do with Kalista. I would say that in the meta right now, since Ash and Jinx are not really that played, I would recommend going for Morgana Kalista. I think this lane can be really fun for you guys. For runes, I go Hybrid Pen Marks, Flat Armor uh, Seals, Flat AP Glyphs and Flat AP Quints. Unless I want to be a bit more tanky, then I will go for the same room page, except I will take two armor quints instead of three AP quints. I will take two armor quints, one AP quint, and I will go flat HP seals. The rest is the same. That's if I want to be a bit more tanky. For Masteries and Morgana, I go 0, 8, and 12 with the, the last point on uh, Thunderlord. It can proc on your W, and it's really cool and does a lot of damage. <laughs> With Morgana level 1, I usually skill Q first because if you have W first, it, it basically just makes you pretty vulnerable in lane. But if you find the opportunity to skill W first, then you should do it because level 1 you can already proc your Spell Thieves item and just push out the wave and stuff. So it's really good, it's just you have to keep in mind that you, can, you become vulnerable. So as long as you have that under control, you can decide between Q or W. And in terms of what you max, you max... Q first, E second, W third. Uh, I personally think that exhaust is really, really strong. So normally I would go flash exhaust unless there is no reason to go exhaust. Then I would go ignite. The reasons where you don't go exhaust are when the enemy mid laner is not an assassin but a control mage. This, uh, that way you obviously can't really get in range to exhaust him. And the top laner is not playing like something like Fiora. Instead they're playing like uh, some more tanky top laner that you really can't exhaust either and then you're only left with the AD to exhaust and then you can kind of like just see for yourself if you really want to use exhaust or you want to get ignite for more lane pressure. With Morgana, first item kind of depends on the situation, what you want to achieve in the game. I usually go in whatever order. It usually ends up being Swiftness Boots or Sidestone. It ends up being both all the time, but it just depends on the order, what, how the game is playing out and what my base uh, goal is when I base. Uh, I end up buying like tier 1 boots or a kindle gem or the spell tips item but usually what you want to end up with is the first core 3 items are the second upgrade for your spell tips, the swiftness boots and your sidestone. And from there on I usually end up upgrading my spell tips to the third upgrade unless I really really need a locket very fast and then I will get locket first but the, the ghosties are really really strong and I, I would recommend you, you get them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lolclass.com.